Okay, um, so I'm Jason and I've been working as a Wikimedian with the National Library of Wales um, for nearly three years now. For the first sort of two and a half years, that was um, as Wikimedian in residence. And then in the last few months, the, um, they've appointed me as a permanent Wikimedian. And my, my job title is now National Wikimedian. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so initially my role was all about uh, sharing images, um, encouraging people through events and workshops to contribute to Wikipedia in Welsh and in English. No one really told me from the start about Wikidata. Um, so I had no idea what it was or, or what it was for. Um, I feel now like I've got a better grasp about what it is. Um, but I still really have no idea what it's for. Um, and I think that's part of what attracted me to Wikidata, is that for some people it's about structuring data, um, authority control, uh, connecting different data sets together. Um, for others it's simply an open repository, a way of sharing their data with a wider audience. Um, so the potential reuses for Wikidata are really endless, and I think that's what makes it so special. So for me and for the National Library of Wales, Wikidata currently um, is really for improving access to our data, um, for enriching our user experience, um, for collection discovery and for connecting our data with the wider semantic web. So after a few months um, of our residency, um, I started hearing sort of whispers about this, this Wikidata thing um, and decided I need to learn more. Uh, and then I went to a, a Wikidata workshop in London and I, I met some Wikidata people for the first time, um, including Navino Evans, who's one of the co-founders of Histropedia. Um, and sort of following the sort of conversations that we had, I, I went back to Wales generally excited and, and I, I said to managers, we need to start doing Wikidata without really knowing what we were going to do. Um, so since then, we, we sort of started embarking on these projects to, to share samples of our data with Wikidata and then looking at um, what we could do with that, what were the advantages um, for the institution for, for doing that. So this talk really is about showing you some of the things that we've done with Wikidata um, in a bid really to show you why Glam and Wikidata are such a good fit. So before we even started contributing to Wikidata, we'd been sharing a lot of images openly um, with Wikicommons. Um, and the reason I mention that is because I think it's important um, in order for GLAMS to get the most out of Wikidata, that you have images that can be used to illustrate the data that you're, you're describing, um, particularly if you're describing images. Um, incidentally, releasing images or media openly um, with Wikicommons is, is well proven to generate high impact. So we've had over 300 million views of our images um, through that impact, through sharing them in Wikipedia articles. And that can be really handy when trying to get managers to sign off on more interesting things like Wikidata. Um, so obviously images aren't always going to be relevant um, depending on the type of data that you're, you're putting into Wikidata. But in terms of visualizing and encouraging creative reuse of data, we found that having media attached um, can be very useful. And we actually believe that the National Library of Wales has more Wikidata items um, about artworks with connected open images than any other institution in the world. Um, and that's something that we're quite proud of and we're hoping to build on this. Um, we've got about 5,000 um, images in a Welsh portrait archive that we're hoping to share in the next few months. And again, we're looking to sort of put that into Wikicommons and Wikidata as a matter of course. So really the National Library of Wales has adopted this policy that anything that's in the public domain um, Sort of public domain images, um, we want to share the information as widely as possible. Um, Commons allows us to do that with the images. Wikidata is perfect for actually doing that with the data as well. And that just sort of breaks down barriers for reuse um, and encourages more people to actually use that content. So, the fun fact here. Wikidata um, has got 23 
items for artworks with images attached that depict the Colosseum, which struck me as not many. So I looked up something in Wales. We've got Conway Castle in, in North Wales has um, 168 items um, with the same criteria on Wikidata. Um, but to be fair to the Colosseum, this is the second biggest castle in the whole of Wales. So, you know. <laughs> so I suppose the next question is, OK, that's, that's an interesting fact, but why? What's, what's the point in, in sharing all this data? Um, and what does the institution gain? So, of course, that's probably what your boss is going to ask as well when you say, let's share all our data with Wikidata. Um, so for me, the answer is simple. It's really about um, giving added value um, to the collections um, and your open content. And if you're ever trying to convince GLAMS, GLAMS to collaborate with, with Wikidata and other Wikimedia projects, um, it's always better to, to show them um, the benefits, to, to show them what they will gain, because um, they're far more receptive to that generally than telling them it'll benefit open knowledge in general and you know, open access. So in the case of the National Library, there were some really obvious um, benefits, and I'm going to show you some of those now. So if we look at our Welsh Landscape Collection, which is one of the collections that we've released um, through Wikidata, um, this is how you'd have to search the collection in the National Library catalogue. It's all kind of bundled in with everything else in the collection. Um, so in fact, to actually search just within this collection, um, you have to use an advanced search. Um, and it's very limited in terms of what you can search for. You can search for the title. There's a few tags um, in the metadata that will, will pick out images. Um, but you can see it displays the image, sort of a window within a window, um, which doesn't look particularly great. There's very limited metadata actually displays. Although there's very rich data for this collection, it doesn't all fit in with our current catalogue, which is like a generic library catalogue that's primarily designed for books. Um, and there's no way that you can sort of dig deeper into this. You can't then display images, other images by the same artist or other images of the same place. So it's, it's very limited in what it can actually do. So in order to add value to the collection, we, we took this existing data um, that we've got and empowered it by converting it to Wikidata. And the data that you see in this example um, is all data that we had, it just wasn't being properly utilised. So there's currently no sort of handbook, a sort of step-by-step -step guide on how you go about taking metadata and, and converting it to Wikidata like this. Um, so we kind of learned as we went along, because um, I'm, I'm not a Wikidata expert, I'm a muggle, as John Cummings would say. Um, so we sort of learned as we went along, and a lot of the uh, praise in this case, with this collection, goes to our Wikidata visiting scholar, who we, um, we've worked with very closely, um, and so he's, he's a volunteer, and he's, he's done a lot of the work of actually matching up the metadata to Wikidata. So what became really clear um, from quite early on in this process was that this was going to actually enrich our data. It was going to make it better. Um, for example, one of the first things we discovered was that as you take place name tags from our metadata and match those with um, the, place, the places on Wikidata, you get geolocation data, um, which means we can display the collections on a map for the first time. Um, and we also noticed that when you start structuring the data, mistakes in the metadata become much more obvious, um, and we can then uh, work to fix those. So using the Sparkle query service, it's possible to um, query the data in an endless number of ways, making it very easy to uncover patterns and gather statistics from the data and then visualize them in a way that people can easily understand. So this visualization depicts the most, uh, shows you the most depicted things within that Welsh landscape collection. So it's no surprise you've got things like ruins, mountains, and rivers. It's all very Welsh. Um, what you can't see there, there's, um, there's actually 15 images that depict goats in the collection, just as a random example. 
What's really great about um, this process um, for the National Library of Wales is that, of course, Wikidata is multilingual. So we can describe the data in any language we like, including Welsh. So here is the same query again, and we've just flicked the switch to Welsh. And this stunned me the first time I saw it because I suddenly realised what we'd done because the data that we've got at the National Library for this collection is only in English. But by putting it into Wikidata, suddenly it's all in Welsh. We didn't translate any of these terms. This is down to volunteers over the years adding Welsh language labels to Wikidata items. Um, and virtually all the terms um, that we've used in this collection were already in Welsh on Wikidata. There's over a million um, items with Welsh labels, I believe. So for GLAMS working in a bilingual or a multilingual environment, Wikidata can really help support access to data in whatever language you like. So then we looked at using third party services to see what we could do with the collection. So we used a, th um, a website called Krotos um, to explore and filter um, our collections through Wikidata. So the first thing you'll see with this interface is that you can visualize the data and the interface itself in dozens of different languages, um, including Welsh. You can use the slider to search for images within a particular time frame. Um, you can uh, browse, you can ask it for random images from within a particular collection. And then you can click on an image, see the, um, the detailed linked data for it so that you could then break the collection down and say, okay, I want to see all images by this artist or by this publisher. Um, and explore the collection in ways that you just can't on the National Library catalogue. So here we've searched for um, images that depict boats and you see you just get the images that depict boats. We can do the same for places. Um, so this is Carnarvon Castle in North Wales. I think this is the biggest castle in Wales. Um, and because of the quality of the data, we can even break it down and look at um, a particular tower, a particular part of that castle um, because of the, the work that the archivists did long ago, but their work was never being sort of utilised through the library catalogue. Um, we've also, through this process, um, enriched the data for this collection with detailed information about the artists, the publishers, the engravers um, involved in the collection, and we've used third-party authorities such as um, VAF to do that. Um, so we can, for example, see um, and, and break the images down based on the publications they were first published in. Um, and you can see here the engraver of that um, volume was a guy called John Boydell. If we want to know more about him, um, we can use the query service, um, various wiki tools, and we can look at his connection, um, connections to other publishers and printers within the collection. So all, the, all these things that I'm showing you, they're... Um, they're all free tools that are available online. A lot of them are open source. They haven't cost a penny, um, whereas the National Library of Wales catalogue costs millions of pounds. Um, so, you know, this, if, if, if you remember that, that slide I showed you of the National Library of, Ca of Wales catalogue, this can do so much more. Um, so it really gives added value. And it's all down to volunteers, community engagement, and it generated a lot of community engagement. Um, and of course, Wikidata as a platform. So for those who want to drill down into a collection or explore and analyze data, this goes way beyond what we can offer with our own website. Um, and I don't know anyone in the glam sector, in, in Wales particularly, uh, budgets are falling, there's constant cuts. So I think low cost, collaborative solutions um, to give added value uh, within the library like this are going to become all the more important. So I've talked a bit about um, data for images, but GLAMS of course could be using Wikidata to share all sorts of data, um, such as biographical data, or we've used it to share data about items from our archive, such as maps, um, in a bid to breathe new life into the data. See the, see the link there? Um, okay. <laughs> so, for example, um, we've, used, we've got a dictionary of Welsh biography, um, and we've been looking at using that Wikidata for this, and what can this do um, for us? So here's the current dictionary of Welsh biography website. 
It's nice, isn't it? Um, I'm sure, I'm sure you agree this would probably be better and more at home as part of the archive rather than a, a gateway to the archive. It's a little bit dated. So how can we add value to this kind of resource in a cost-effective way? Um, and for me, Wikidata is at least part of the solution. So again, when we went about creating Wikidata for, for the Dictionary of Welsh Biography, um, we engaged volunteers. Uh, we initially, in the mix and match process, um, and then during the process of enriching the data, and this is actually a sort of Wikidata editathon, hackathon that we did with um, staff um, at the National Library of Wales. So, now that we've got data for individuals in the Dictionary of Welsh Biography, we can start to do cool things with it. Um, for example, we can use this timeline to um, view the collection chronologically and we can filter it based on where people were born, where they died, or in this case, um, on their occupation. And the images that you see here, are some of them are images from the National Library of Wales, some of them are images from other institutions, and they're drawn in, of course, through um, Wikimedia Commons. So this, again, is giving added value um, to, to the service we provide. So this timeline is based on Histropedia, and um, we're now looking at, at the National Library to collaborate with people that make this kind of software to um, help us make bespoke interfaces that we can integrate with our own websites um, to give added value um, to those websites. And we we're pretty sure that sort of using this enriched data and working with people that are developing these kind of tools, um, it's going to be far more cost effective than trying to develop something that does something similar in house. So until now, the Dictionary of Welsh Biography was basically tagged text files about each individual. Um, but by turning that data into structured data, we can actually start to analyse that for the first time. So this chart gives you um, the lifespan of individuals um, that are covered in the Dictionary of Welsh Biography based on their occupation. Um, so you probably can't see, but the lowest um, life expectancy is for missionaries. Um, and the highest two are um, teachers and university lecturers. But interestingly, the after missionaries, the, the worst off are lawyers, which is, which is an interesting one. Um, so as we get more data in, perhaps we'll find out more. If we get cause of death, for example, we might find a little more information about what happened to the lawyers. Um, but as we improve this, we should be able to look at other things as well. It'd be really interesting to look at the Dictionary of Welsh Biography in geospatial terms, for example. So that's a few examples of the data that we've been sharing with Wikidata, but we've also shared other collections. We've been putting data about Victorian shipping um, into Wikidata. Um, creating items about historical Welsh newspapers and journals, manuscripts and maps. Um, and we've been collaborating with other institutions. For example, we just worked with um, CADU, who are responsible for all the listed buildings in Wales. And we've got all um, 30,000 Welsh listed buildings now in Wikidata. So I hope I've highlighted some of the advantages um, of working with Wikidata to enrich um, and provide better access to individual data sets. But of course, the value goes way beyond that because Wikidata is about connecting collections together, um, both collections from within one institution, but also sort of globally. And the Sum of All Paintings uh, project is a great example of, of connecting up collections from all around the world. So here's a, here's a quick example of how some of our collections have become entwined and we found connections that we didn't know existed um, simply by using Wikidata. So I've taken the example of a mansion that's just a couple of miles down the road from where I live. Um, so if we look at this on Wikidata, um, it's depicted in our Welsh landscape collection. It's also a grade one listed building, tying into the listed buildings data that we've just released. Um, there's also a Reverend William Powell on Wikidata, who's part of the Dictionary of Welsh Biography, um, and he's listed as um, an owner of the property. 
We've also got several things that are named after the mansion. So we've got uh, a ship in the shipping records that is named after the mansion. And we've got this interesting little bowl here that's called the, it's called the Nanteos Cup. Um, and again, is, is named after the mansion. It's now part of the collection at the National Library of Wales. Um, so you can see all these, these different connections. And before I move on, actually, that cup is one of the few items on Wikidata that uses the instance of Holy Grail. Um, so we've, we've actually connected, you know, landscape prints, ships, people, and the Holy Grail. Um, so these are things that we, we just had no idea that we could connect together until we started using, um, using Wikidata. Uh, so there we are. So what's next? Um, what is next? So yeah, firstly, we want more people to be reusing this data that we've shared. Um, we've started working with local universities to provide data to computer science students. Say, so look, this is our Wikidata, go and do something cool with it. Um, so we're hoping that's going to bring out some interesting results. We want to start holding hackathons um, and just getting as many people um, using our data as possible. We want to use the data uh, this enriched data in our own websites. For example, we're looking at bringing in the geolocation data from the Welsh Landscape Collection so that we can um, uh, add those images to our um, Welsh Places website and, and view them on a map. Um, we, we then want to go one step further and use Wikidata to actually power our websites. So we could use the timelines, for example, or generate info boxes or have maps that are part of our sort of core websites, um, starting with a new Dictionary of Welsh Biography website that we're developing, hopefully, um, so that Wikidata is actually powering our services. And developing the Welsh language in a digital environment is actually a priority of the Welsh Government at the moment. So we've been working um, closely with them to try and get more Welsh labels into Wikidata and working with uh, Welsh universities on machine translation technology. Um, and that, in turn, should lead to better Wikidata integration on the Welsh Wikipedia. Uh, we saw the article placeholder in the, the presentation this morning. That's something that we want to see develop on the Welsh Wikipedia. We've already got quite a lot of info boxes that are powered by Wikidata and lists. Um, and we're hoping that Wikidata will become more important, which is particularly with a small um, wiki. It's a very good way of managing the accuracy of content uh, sort of semi-automatically. So that's it, really. Um, I hope I've sort of given you some good examples of why Wikidata and, and Glam can be a really good fit. Um, I think there's potential for us to do a lot more. Um, so yeah, happy birthday, Wikidata, and thank you for listening. Yes, no, yes. Um, um, if you're interested in bringing content back into the collection from Wikidata, not just pushing it out yeah. or maybe embedding, uh, how are you organizationally dealing with uh, concerns about vandalism, concerns about um, art, uh, content quality? It's no longer only our official information. Um, these are things that Glam and curators are naturally worried about. Yeah. Especially if we are live embedding information on a GLAM website from Wikidata, it introduces a new interesting vector for vandalism. It does. Um, and this is something we're, we're only now really starting to debate seriously. Um, one of the things that we're looking at doing is um, bringing data from Wikidata into our catalog records as, to enrich it and you know, to give extra data. Um, so we need to be clear whenever we do this um, that um, what you're providing is, is added value. It's not library data, um, that it's very clear that it's come from an external source. Um, but I think at the end of the day, if, if you get too worried about vandalism and, and just, just get too frightened off by the whole thing, it just won't happen. Um, so, yeah. 
But ju just to add on that, I was wondering if part of the conversation could be also uh, a technical one. So I know at Europeana, because uh, there is this concern of making mixing curated data with other data. So in a way, the technical means that came to our help was uh, annotation. And so basically, every time we link something to Wikidata, this is represented as an annotation on top of the curated data. So yeah. I wonder if there are other things like that that could join the, the discussion, saying, well, it, there is limitation, of course, but there are also the, some technical means that can be used to 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 help and and also maybe um, leverage the um, uh, um, yeah maybe um, lessen the concern of of the curators yeah. or etc. Yeah. So, so it's yeah. I mean it's part of a a wider initiative. For example, at the National Library, we're developing a a, a volunteer platform for. Um, transcribing and enriching data for our collections and and that too we want to bring and, and be able to display through our catalogue but again that's user that's volunteer created data um, and so Wikidata that's brought back in may well sit with that kind of data as, as sort of added value data it's just clearly defining the difference between the two really. Yeah, from a service point of view, I'm I'm very much a fan of of not directly uh, linking live data to have to keep a local co copy. Um, so, how do you think uh, one should deal with with update cycles in both uh, directions? Uh, if you have established uh, a connection, then you, you would not necessarily always have human interaction, but to have to s this automation and uh, refreshing process uh, uh, somehow automated. And I would really like to talk about this kind of of, of tooling and connectors uh, that we that we that we need between Wikidata and uh, Europeana, for instance. Yeah, I mean, I think we definitely need these these tools. I'm not a particularly technically minded person, so I wouldn't. Um, I, I don't really know how how you'd go about doing that. But it's um, yeah, it's definitely something that you need. And I think it would be really interesting to have more tools fr from the Wikidata end to monitor to be able to monitor items um, and and check them against your data. And I think the, the thing that was mentioned this morning about institutions being able to sign off on, on statements that have come from their records in Wikidata, that kind of thing would be um, really useful um, in, in trying to, to make uh, the items as, as sort of accurate as possible and monitor, monitor them. Uh, I... Uh Thanks a lot for uh, your contribution uh, on uh, Wikidata. I, I, we really enjoy to see uh, and to discover so many things about, about wealth. It's, it's really great. And one uh, key point of your contribution is uh, high quality of metadata, uh, which is uh, very, very good. And uh, especially for depicts, as you, as you explain it. And uh, we have many, many depicts on, uh, depict on the, uh, on the artworks. And I wanted to know, uh, how you, did you produce them? Did you make uh, matching before or all, uh, all along the way of the contribution? Uh, so I would like to know how, how, how you do that, how you did do that. Okay, so with the, uh, the bigger collections, like the Welsh Landscape Collection, um, there was a lot of, the images had been tagged at the cataloging sort of archiving process um, with, with tags describing what appeared in the images. Um, and so we, we literally just converted those and mapped them to um, properties on Wikidata. Um, with some of the smaller collections we've worked on, and we've run some volunteer projects where we we will manually um, collect that data and, and, and add it sort of during the process of preparing all the data and getting it into Wikidata. But I think it's really important if, you, if you're going to put artworks um, into Wikidata that they're well described. Um, I, I just think the sort of possibilities in terms of reuse are so much greater if you do that and it's worth investing the time to do it. Any more? Go for it. <laughs> Again, if there's no one else, what is the difference between, or can you explain the role of national Wikimedian, um, 
in the sense of you're, you're working with an institution, an individual institution. Yeah. Um, do they mind if you are doing projects that don't have a direct relationship to that institution's collection? Um, no, they don't. Uh, particularly that's rare and yeah. exciting. <laughs> that's yeah. usually a, a, a problem of Wikipedians in residence if they find something, someone wants to do something really cool, but it doesn't have a direct benefit for the institution. Yeah. So the way that we've we've tried to set it up and frame it and make it look attractive to the National Library is that um, they're kind of establishing themselves as an umbrella or organization that can help other organizations in Wales to um, share their content openly, to understand open licensing and link data and all these kind of things, um, which puts the library in a stronger position in terms of funding, for example. Um, also, a lot of the work that I do that isn't directly related to the library um, are funded or at least part funded from external grants and that, that brings um, more money into the library and it and it creates partnerships you know through through working with getting the listed buildings data we've we've created a partnership there and a and a, and a two-way conversation with an institution that we didn't have much much contact with otherwise so it's it, it helps the library build up those networks thank you <laughs> No last question. Thank you.